Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the conversation series. I am thrilled today to have Miss Amy Pons here. Miss Amy Pons is the founder and CEO at Unlock the Magic, which at first, can I just say, thought it had something to do with Disney. It does not have anything to do with Disney. She's got her own magic, ladies and gentlemen. It's a divine feminine movement. She's a master certified life coach, podcast host of Women in Making Moves podcast, all of these things. Uh, but I'm going to let turn it over to Amy and let her introduce herself further. Thank you, Danielle. So it is funny that Unlock the Magic, it sounded familiar, but I did not realize exactly what it was until my LLC was solidified, which I'm not mad at. Like it's, it's amazing. And, uh, coincidentally, I went to Disney earlier this year and you don't see it that much, but I do love that. That's something that you think about because I think as adults, you want to go to Disney to feel magic. Okay. And that is what I bring into this world on this plane is I unlock the magic that's already in you, that's already always been in you, and that has been cloaked and hidden or dimmed by any, you know, training, preconditioning things throughout your life. And we draw that back out and build a bridge to that magical higher self so that, you know, while we're being still asked to being operate in the, what I call the toxic masculine. So, yep get more into that but yes unlock the magic was a something that when my attorney asked me what do you want to call your LLC I said you know what I want to do I want to unlock the magic in people that's already in them that has been just hidden for a little bit and that's what I do is I create safe space in a in a sacred energetic exchange with people that I serve and we're able to in a in a safe way explore what could be and I say safely because oftentimes where our heart or where our soul wants to take us is not necessarily in the 3d human world right. what feels quote-unquote safe and secure because yep. we still need money food you know, whatever that looks like and until we can pay in candlesticks yeah. uh we gotta make some money so anyway that's what I do that's unlock the magic yes absolutely I'm a divine feminine catalyst. And what that means is I am on the, I've been asked in this lifetime to usher back in the divine feminine in which we've not had for thousands of years, but specifically over the past hundred, it's very simplistically divine feminine is the feeling, flowing, trusting, believing, creating, birthing. And the divine masculine is structure order action holding you know um taking that step so when you can imagine when they when they work harmoniously together it's yeah. this beautiful symbiotic relationship between feeling and doing which we've been in the doing way too long which it's only about the now and that like i said the toxic which is the power money yep. order hierarchy so anyway so that's what unlock the magic is all about is through individual and group coaching, unlocking the magic in others so that they can figure out what could be in a world that doesn't feel quite right anymore. Okay. And then uh, I'll pause there before yeah. I go into other things. I, I love this because you at the same time, like this has not been your journey your whole life either. This is this is something that you have come into you trans you had this journey in what we know is is corporate life corporate america and all these things and became this master certified life coach which is incredibly inspiring and i would love if you if you could just share you know that moment of realization of I'm not supposed to be in this corporate world anymore. I am not supposed to be doing this stuff because I think a lot of us, myself included, don't know when that moment is. Yes. <laughs> and I'll talk about the second part of my beautiful new world, which is I'm an intersectional feminist, okay. which I now know about myself in the past. I've been an amazing white feminist, which okay. my 
blissful ignorance toward feminism has been toward advancing only for white women by and large. And that is really the historical context of feminism. And if you ask a lot of uh, women of color, feminism is actually kind of a trigger word or about, you know, they don't resonate, something that they don't resonate with. So I'm now on the forefront of ushering change for all women, all women, not just white women. So that's a big part of women making moves. That is the platform and the amplification of intersectional feminism and finding these really amazing women of the world that are inviting change and doing things differently. And then I'll go into the third body of work later. So yes, um, I grew up in a home where there was only one right way. And by and large, that is how many of us, and I'm an elder millennial, that's how many of us boomer X millennials we only learned the one right way because again back when we think about when the patriarchy started it was the one right way and it was white men benefiting white men doing things for white men and oh. that just kept perpetuating itself and that brought it to you know as again as I was growing up you go to school you yep. get a job you pay taxes and you retire to Florida yep so that was the plan and so I was just going along with emotions and I didn't even realize in high school, you know, I am, am I, I'm the, I'm a first generation college graduate. So it was, that was just all, it was very out of the ordinary, but I was like, well, I see all my friends doing cool things. They're seemingly on the uh, right track. And also my parents were like, you're going to college. It's just cause you know, the, the, they didn't. And they were like, you're going. So I was like, all right, I'll go to college. I have no idea what I'm going to do but let's go to college. And it was the best time of my life. Met people that are, that were really my new, my, like my really grounded, solid family. And I got into various majors. I mean, to the tune of, I changed some majors six times. And then I finally, on my, on my fifth round of college, or like my fifth year, my yeah. super senior year, I was like, all right. My parents were like, let's wrap this up. I'm like, all right, let's do that. So <laughs> I, um, I graduated with English and publishing. I was like, sure, let's do this. Let's figure out what this is. And I became a bank teller out of college. What's interesting is about a bank teller is that I was, um, it was cool. Yeah. It was a steady paycheck. And I started to notice around the bank, there were a lot of people in like high powered suits and they looked very professional. They looked important. And I started to say, that looks interesting that is what I want to be and do. I want to look important. I want to play the role and I want to make some more money. So titles and money became very, very interesting to me, very sexy to me in my twenties. So that is what, and I, and, and by the way, I was still, I wouldn't say that I was necessarily awakened to my sole purpose, but I was always that I, 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 I'm finding the thread through my life of where this beautiful spark and magic was always in me, of course. And it was just, I had some training and some path finding of that one right way of what you do uh, to support yourself later on, you know, once you graduate college. So anyway, that thread was that I was the one that all my friends would go to for advice, or like, I was the one that they'd always go to because I had no, I was never judging. I would just be like, tell me what's going on. Let's, let's talk through it. And it was from that place of, I was just kind of neutral always. Um, Looking back, I now know that was critical. So I then, after the bank teller job, and I'll expedite this a little bit. So got my first big corporate job in Chicago for Babies R Us, Toys R Us, May They Rest, although they're making yeah. a <laughs> they're making a comeback. Yes. But that was the first time that I was in the really like that that world of suits and heels. And you know, I have naturally curly hair, but I was told by my first boss, I think I was 26, he said, you need to wear heels, you need to wear a suit and you need to straighten your hair. It's, and so, so I did all those things, right? Because it was still, I was looking for someone to tell me what to do. I was looking for that permission of how to show up. And he was very willing to tell me that. So that's what, and I became quote unquote, very successful. I won a national award for the, for that corporation. I was by all means, extremely successful and then <laughs> Toys R Us acquired Boys Babies R Us and then the recession so they just 
literally canceled marketing. Like they, because I, I, I was on the marketing team. Um, they just dismissed the entire uh, mar- marketing team. And it was just like a stake through my heart because what I do find is interesting is that Babies Are Us was a brand that had this beautiful, beautiful, divine feminine relationship with the customer. It was not about selling, doing. It was about this family, this mom is welcoming in this new life event, this big one. And there are so many emotions. It's so personal. And we were able to, as a marketing team, bridge that for her. It was so, so gorgeous and divine. So that was the first time that was actually like a good mix. Although I didn't love kind of the dictating of what I was supposed to show up as. I'll pause there. That was my first experience. I love what you, you, what you said though, and how you grew up in that one track household, because I think a lot of, a lot of people don't realize that they grew up in households like that too, until they get to the other side and they're like, this is all I've known my entire life. And we don't know how to function outside of that, out of that one path or out of sight of that one box. And when you grow up like that, and you're looking around at your friends saying, well, they're going and doing all these cool things. We don't know how to exist and go and do those cool things ourselves because we just never grew up with that thinking. I was someone who as well was go to school, get your paper, and then you can go do whatever you want. But it was still up until that point, it was play sports, go to school every single day. You have homework, you have to do all these things and go get your degree and then once you did that you could go do whatever yeah and you said something really critical which is everyone kept doing just what they knew they were supposed to be doing so for instance you know my parents didn't go to college I think they tried college for like a semester and then they 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 quit but to your point everyone is unless you awaken to what your soul really wants, you just keep doing what you were taught to be doing. It's just kind of a, it's an autopilot of generations. And there's many of us, especially, uh, and we can get into this later, but energetically the vibration is, is raising with humanity right now. And there's a lot of people awakening to saying, wait, I don't want to be an autopilot. I don't want to do just one thing the rest of my life. I, I'm not meant for just a a one track the rest of my life. What is, and, and that's, again, that can be both uncomfortable. It's also uncomfortable if you don't try to pull at that thread a little bit and see what that's about. So yeah, a lot of us, we were, I would say by and large, especially if we were raised by boomers and X, that was like, that's what, that's what you did. You grow up, you get a, you get a job, you get a paycheck, you pay bills. There's more. Yeah. So, so anyway, through over the next few, several years, I was in different corporations as well. I went to nonprofit for a year and then I went to corporate for the vitamin shop, lived on the East coast in Manhattan. That was exciting. And I had no money ever. And then, uh, I now I met my now husband and we settled back into the Midwest and I, found my last stop in corporate, which was um, here in the Chicago suburbs for financial services. And I have to say, when I first started, and I I think I started there when I was in the beginning of my 30s, and again, I'll be 42 in a month. The beginning of my 30s, I was still like, titles and money are cool. And let me see how I want to climb the ladder. And I want to be those fancy women that are wearing those suits. And it was, and then like the money was getting exciting, you know, like the six figures and all of that. We got married and everything was kind of going swimmingly. And then my mid thirties, I started to get real antsy. Like, what is this? And by that point I had, by that point I had throughout any of the experiences that I had, I had, I had many workplace abuse experiences by that point. And looking at it now through the lens that I have, it's more of, and this is not justifying workplace abuse, and this is not a pass. These individuals that are harming out here in the workplace and dictating that the way that they are, it's more of an example of what we've been talking about is, well, 
they received that. So that's all they know how to perpetuate. And there's very few that are like, I'm going to stop the cycle. I can't help how many people I talk to. They're like, I'll never do this when I'm in charge. And then they inevitably do. And it's just, in my opinion, it's that you get to that place and then you're still having to operate and in the way that it's always been. Um, you don't like it, but you just keep doing it because, oh, by the way, that's your job and paycheck and everything is tied to that. So, but in my mid thirties, I started to get really antsy and I'm like, Whoa, what am I, what is this? Like, what am I doing? I kept uh, within the company I was at, I was there for almost a decade in my last stop in corporate. And every two years I would get a promotion. I would move jobs. I would, every two years I would, it was kind of a running joke. I'm like, what is that? And then I started, uh, I was the leader of the employee resource group for women. Okay. And that's when I started to get a glimpse. Uh, I was, I was leading about 1500 women of, you know, a fortune 200 company in their higher selves or their, like, what does that look like for you? Do you, what is that next step? Do you want a mentor? Do you want to expand your network? Do you want that a lateral? Do you want the promotion? What does that look like? Cause it was very specific to the workplace. And then I started getting a little bit into more of the life aspect. So I, I talked a lot about, I was open about my experiences with domestic violence throughout my life and just different workplace traumas and things of that nature. That started to get really interesting because women started to resonate with what I'm saying. And they're like, oh, this is more than just a, a work thing. And I started coaching hundreds of women um, outside my day job. And it was, I was like, that's, that's pretty cool. That's that what that's what lights me up. And I still didn't, I still wouldn't have told you I would have been a coach at that point. So my last stop in corporate in 2022, for 10 months, I was uh, told every single day that I'm worthless. I'm not good enough. I never should have gotten the job, et cetera. And by the way, I was also getting award after award for uh, my, the results, the performance, the quote unquote performance that I was. So I, so on the metrics front, I was really performing what I was, what my, what folks around me were telling me I was not succeeding in was I was bringing the human element into my day to day and I was caring and I was coaching and that was not welcome. I was too much in that space. And so I started sharing my experience of how I was being abused and how I was being told I wasn't good enough. Yep. And I was told very, very brazenly, suck it up. It is what it is. Deal with it. And uh, I had kind of a one last straw moment when my boss said, I will break you of this behavior. Huh. And I said, nah, today's my last day. And I shut my laptop and I was out. So that's the, when you asked me like, how? <laughs> yeah. That's literally like, so I'm an awakened soul. I'm very in tune with my energy, my spiritual elements, my spirit team, my guides, things of that nature. They kept ringing my doorbell. And I now know these experiences that they were setting in my pathway. These were more of my doorbell. Like they're, okay, yeah. Amy, what are we, we going to do now? And I'm grateful, not for the abuse, but I'm grateful for the continuous experience that were laid out for me so that I could continuously assess when my soul was ready to fully awaken because you can't force the timeline, but there are ways to welcome it in and get curious. And so when I closed my laptop and said, today's my last day, I didn't have a plan. That was very uncomfortable. And that's why I work with, that's what a lot of my coaching is about today. So, cause I don't recommend or suggest, by the way, there's two things I would say. I don't recommend or suggest everyone just say today's my last day. Um, if you don't have something, some sort of a plan lined up. And I will say on this, in the same breath, if your mental health is at a place where you need to separate yourself from that organization, you need to do that because your life is not worth any, no job is worth your life. So I would say that those both things, but that's why I work with people now to get kind of a life raft or a bridge set up so that they can leave that place, especially from a workplace abuse perspective. So I'll pause there again. I was at a place for three years and 
my mentor. She was incredible. We went through some massive cycles of, of leadership changes and people leaving the company. She was one who voluntarily left and said, it's time for me to start my next chapter. And they had leadership come in that was there already. And it got to the point where I was like, I, I can't work with this person anymore because I feel useless in my job. I was like, I'm out, I'm gone. I was like, find somebody else to be your little puppet and what you want to push around. I was like, it's not gonna be me anymore. I was like, I'm gone. I can't do this anymore. Here's what's happening, which is why many of us, and I, it's not just women, it's men too, but primarily women and people of color are leaving the workforce. If we think back to when many of these organizations, like older corporations, it started up, that was 100 years ago. Well, not not quite 100 years ago, but 60 to 100 years ago. And you think about it, it's the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. Uh, that was when, you know, literally sitting around a table, it was white men planning for white men. Again, more of the same. So like literally by and large, the workplace was not designed with women and people of color in mind. So you can imagine how that's manifested in 2024 post pandemic, which by the way, whether we liked it or not, was a record scratch moment for all of us to say, oh, what is life about? Like what, like existential things. And so, so when you, as you're seeing this, you're seeing women leave in droves and there's so many I have so many conversations with amazing women all the time they're like we need women to stay in the workplace and it's always a yes but and for me because again yes stay there and try to make the change that's needed also be mindful of your own mental health because and that's why you see so many of us out creating our own trails our own businesses like me um because I refuse to be in a work setting, a workplace that not only I can't be myself, but also there is literally, there's still the, I'm going to exert power over you to get ahead or to do the day-to-day work. I will not be in that environment ever again. So that's, that's the, I'm, I'm proud of myself because I had my own back and I started really listening and pulling the thread that I started to feel around 35, 36. And I didn't quite know what that meant. And I even would have told you probably two or three years ago, oh, I'll never leave corporate. No, no, no. Okay, I can't do do that. I can't do that. You can. And I would always recommend having a coach, an ally, a mentor in your corner to help you thread that needle because our egos will always keep us from exploring that soul essence that soul purpose because the ego is hardwired in the historical safety and security of the the old way if i will and i love how even before unlock unlock the magic like was created you were already helping people you were already through through your corporate life we're already coaching people. And I loved your, your doorbell reference because I I think it's so true. Like it was, it was there at your door mm-hmm. and you, that realization that Bowie, you opened it up. You were like, yep, let's, let's do this. Let's, this is what mm-hmm. you're awakening. I love that whole analogy. And it's, it's a little foreshadowing of what, of what did come, but I love that you were already helping people in that corporate setting, making a difference there, even before a love the magic was created. Yeah. And that's really how I got there too. I, you know, when I said today's my last day, I shut down all engines for the rest of 2022. I almost, the very next week, I almost took like a, 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 a bigger offer, like half a million dollars, wow. you know, you know, I used, I almost did that. And then I was like, wait a second. I left for a reason. Let me, let me pull at this thread a little bit more. And, you know, and going from making multi six figures overnight to $0, that was, a, 
I, again, all of these things are real and can be all true at once. And that's why I really, really strongly recommend if you're at all curious or pulling at that thread, please get a coach. Yeah. Those, the one who is not going to pull you along at their pace, but at yours. So uh, that's really, really critical. I had three coaches uh, when I, you know, I was like, oh, I gotta figure this out. But I shut down all engines in 2022 and then literally just started, you know, a couple of folks had reached out for me to do some consulting because I've been in corporate marketing, corporate executive for 20 years. And I said, okay, well, maybe I'll create an LLC. And that's when I got in the conversation about Unlock the Magic. And then I got my certification for coaching in the spring. And that's what I've been doing the past year. And it's evolved beautifully from there. And at this point, to your point, so when you said I was helping people, when I started to think about when I created Unlock the Magic, I was thinking about what what did feel good about the last 20 years? <laughs> and <laughs> Um, I, I actually thought about the time at Babies R Us when like I would literally have an emotional visceral response to when a new mom would feel lit up and she would, you know, she would stop crying because we were helping her figure out like how to even start preparing for a baby, you know, and it was just way beyond like a retail experience that we were, again, we were marketing. So we would hold seminars and safety things for her. That was something that felt really magical to me. And I now understand that to be, I'm a, I'm a healer, I'm a nurturer, and I'm a truth teller. And so that was a thread that I pulled. And then that in conjunction with the fact that I was the women's ERG leader and coaching women to unlock their magic, that's when it all started to come together. I was like, oh, do I want to be a coach? I think so. And so that's what helped me pull at that thread a little bit more was the fact that I did love so much when women light up and remember who the fuck they are oh, yeah. that that is what yeah lights me up and like sends my my magic through the roof and uh and then and then at the same time you know as a coach for all coaches out there you know that it's not it's never about us it's about the person we're serving in front of us so my intersectional feminism that's why i created women making moves because i also wanted to be one more place that these women can amplify their own voices and i would you know get even one more ear on the amazing things that women are doing today and um i feel specifically called to women i mean i do coach men as well and I know women are on the forefront right now of ushering back in the divine feminine. So that is the call that I'm answering by and large. I was just about to ask you about, about your podcast and how in the skit in the scheme of things and how you're working in this movement, how it fits in to unlock the magic, who you're talking to, what is it, what is it? that what are the threads that you're pulling there through the podcast and trying to call more attention to? Yeah, I would say that there are three big flows of Unlock the Magic, which ultimately, at the end of the day, they are all for psychological safety. Okay. So for coaching, I help you find psychological safety in a container where nothing has to change today that brings safety into yep. what you want to feel. And then you start thinking about how you could infer, you know, integrate it into your day to day. Yep. Women making moves, you come on and you feel unabashedly you say whatever you want to feel. We go as far or as we go really deep into things that you feel passionately about. Again, creating that psychological safety that space in which you can be unabashedly you uh, a lot of women will say how do I prepare I'm like I just want you I want your unique brilliance your unique essence that's all I want and it's up to you what you want to what you want to talk about so again it's that that free-flowing psychological safety and then third which is I am on the national team to push forward the workplace psychological safety act which is a piece of legislation that's been written that will hold an employer accountable when there's been a psychological abuse event. And 
it is progressing in Massachusetts. And this Wednesday is actually the first hearing for Rhode Island. The goal this year is to take it state by state and eventually have a federal law, which would be similar to EPA or OSHA, to hold the to go in and investigate if there were an incident. And because we all know if we've been in a psychological abuse event in the workplace, there's no law, there's no precedence to protect the individual once they raise their hand. Yep. It is all on you and it's, uh, we need a law. So I would tell you, those are the all encompassing, those three big flows that I am, that I organically attracted and flowing with is yeah. all under psychological safety and bringing back our unique individuality into this world where, again, we have been asked over the past hundred years specifically to be in a copy paste yep. culture. And that is I'm helping people unsubscribe on their terms, on their timeline and what feels safe to them, because it is again, all psychological safety. Yep. And I, I was not aware of psychological safety. I don't think, a, you know, a lot of people are, but I learned it from listening to the podcast, following you on LinkedIn and following your work. And so this is until recently was a very, very new safety for me to be aware of. And so I've learned a, a ton from you on this concept, but what is the importance here of pers the personal growth and healing aspect? And how can you create an environment of psychological safety? And how do you do that with your clients? So I would say, first of all, and this is, this is what we're getting ready to as a national team, we're going to embark on is what is psychological safety? especially as it relates to the workplace, because a lot of people, and, and again, I look back on my experience, there were people being psychologically abused every single day. And it was under the idea that, oh, that's just that person. That's just how they are. Uh, when someone will cry in a meeting, it's like, yeah, that happens. No, none of that should happen. Uh, so we're getting ready to embark on a campaign of like, what is psychological abuse in the workplace? And it'll be rolled out in socials and emails and things like that. But it'll literally be examples like gaslighting, things that things that you can't necessarily like see or touch, you yeah. know, but but like, but to help people understand that's not acceptable in the workplace. Like you should be able to come into your workplace with dignity and with respect and be able to healthily debate on a way forward, not tear each other down and feel feel like that is. So um, it's amazing to your point, psychological safety is relatively newer in the workplace and it's still kind of, un, you know, we're, we're still working on like helping understand people what that means. So the way that I create psychological safety with anyone I meet, and especially in my coaching sessions, to be able to extract that magic that they're not able to maybe express on their day to day is I create a very, very safe container in which I'm able to read energy. Yeah. And when I, when I create that sacred space of energy exchange, I'm helping you navigate within you those threads that are asking to be seen and heard because by the way any any energy that comes up whether it be i mean literally any type of energy and i don't want to get it confused with emotion right but it's energy and emotion like what's coming up what is that and a lot of times whether it be not having time in a work day or a space in a work day you're not able to feel what you want to feel whether again it's an energy or, or an emotion but in a sacred space with me, we go there on, again, in your time, but we'll say, what is that thread? Like someone will say something that's coming up to them. It won't enter your consciousness if it's not something that's being asked to be shared, healed, worked through, et cetera, what, what have you. So we create the energetic exchange in which there's not a judgment. There's no action to take. There's not a task to perform. There's nothing to be fixed. It is exploratory energetic flow. Okay. And we go where we go. There's yeah. no agenda. 
there's no homework. I don't have programs. I don't have, um, you know, coursework to do. It is literally the way someone shows up and whatever's on their heart that day, we go there. Because I think a lot of times, and I'm not calling out coaches at all, I think a lot of times there are programs, there are things that you sign up for, Mm -hmm. and it's sometimes you don't get what you're looking to get out of that. So I love that you keep it open to whatever it holds for the day and whatever that person is needing at that current moment. I think that's extremely important. That's exactly right, because it's not about me, and I could create coursework, but that might have nothing to do with either the person I'm serving that day or to your point, whatever's coming up. And that's why I chose the route of life coach, because my clients could know that they can come to me with anything, whether it be personal work, family, and by the way, I'm not a therapist. And we go where they want to go that session. And then the, different, the main difference between a therapist and a coach, therapists will focus primarily solely on a past trauma or a past diagnosis, or, you know, it's more like a medical, whereas coaches, we, we focus on the here and the future. It's like, okay, what do you want to do to get to your highest self? And then we build a bridge to get there. So it's about action. Yep. Um, but with me specifically, it's going to be inspired aligned action with what, what I mean by that is a lot of times we will set a goal and we're like, okay, I want to get promoted. Great. You get promoted and you're like, okay, now what? Yep. Because you haven't set the feeling or the emotion that you wanted to feel when you got promoted. It's just like, you're going through the motions of life. So that's where we, again, we, we, we balance between the divine feminine, which is the, what do I want to create with the divine masculine is what do I want to do. So it's both together. And that's how we get to more of a fulfilled life okay so because we're balanced with what we want to feel and what we want to do i love the threads that you pull here and once again the pulling of emotions and taking that it's the how do we take the next step how do we feel about that step how do we where do we want to feel here because a lot of time i think it goes back to that one track that we grew up learning we're one track. And once we get there, we're like, okay, what are we supposed to do now? But I think a lot of us are like, I don't, like you were saying, when you were in your thirties, you got antsy, like, are we supposed to be doing something else? Are we supposed to be at this one place? I think we don't know what to do with those emotions. Right. And especially as the world gets more pinched and I call it pinched because there are so many, well, on the soul plane, there's no good or bad, right or wrong. Everything's neutral. Everything, you know, when you remember who you are as a soul, you remember your highest purpose and you walk to that and nothing's inherently good or bad. And at the same time, in a hum- human world, there are things that objectively going on in the world right now that we could say, yes, that that they're not good. Like they don't feel good. Uh, I will say once you start to follow those threads of what your unique brilliance, your unique magic is, all of those things that are pinching out in the world don't hurt as bad on a personal level, on a daily basis, because you're, you're following your soul purpose. You're not just like going through the motions of a copy paste culture where you're going to a job that you might not feel fulfilled in. You're, you're again, just going through the motions of life. The things that are, that are bad happening out there And I'm not saying everyone needs to be a coach to be able to feel this. What I am saying is when you start to explore what your higher purpose, what your soul essence, what your, and and someone out there in like the most staunch corporate role in the C-suite, let's say, or high or whatever it is, they're like, "Ah, I'm meant to be here. I would invite you to go back to when you were five years old playing in the mud. What did they want to do? Who did they want to be? And if you tell me that it's a C-suite, this and that, great. That's fantastic. There's no judgment. I would also say there's many of us, again, awakening to the fact that there are there is so much trauma happening in the globe right now, in the world, that we're awakening to, okay, how can I help humanity just a little bit? Whether, you know, whatever that threat is. And that's what that's what the call really is. 
that I would invite people to uh, explore just by even one degree. Like, what is that? And I love that you say, like, go back to when you're five years old, because a, a lot of people be like, a lot of people said astronaut, a lot of people said a princess, a lot of people said all of these things. And as we got older, it started to tame down, it started not to be these things that, you know, we dreamed and once again, had the magic inside of all of us. So we're kids wanting to go and just do all these things. We got into these, these boxes and we said, oh, this is what we're going to be. This is what yeah. we lost the magic over the, over there's something that happens from a kid to, you know, we're just start, we're, we're, we're told not to imagine we're told, and that's shifting too. you know, the parents that are, that are becoming parents now they're, they're in, not every parent, but they're encouraging the parent, the, the kids do explore, yeah. do imagine. And that's what we do sometimes too. And I'll do with my coaching is uh, we will, just sit and imagine and daydream for a little bit and be like, look, you have a safe space to do that. And so it's getting back to the element of, of, of play. And again, that flow in the divine feminine, when we're only in the masculine, we're only worried about tasks, actions, order, structure, and then there's no space to explore what your soul wants to feel. I think taking it back to the beginning of our conversation, we were talking about Disney too. We yes. both been to Disney in the last year. And we're both adults, and you know, there's this whole thing of Disney adults. But I think what people are missing about Disney adults is that you get to go and act like it feel like a kid again, which mm -hmm. I think once again adds into this whole conversation. Is we got to a point in life where it just, we, we were not able to explore and play and things like that, but when we could go and feel like a kid again, it's magical. It's fantastic. It's, it's freeing. It, it is. Do you remember one, one scene that I think about a lot? Do you, have you seen the Santa Claus? I have. It's my favorite Christmas movie. So, you know, when it was like this really stuffy boring christmas party and then um and then tim allen does his thing and everybody got their childhood toys yes. and it became this room full of magic that's what i'm talking about it's it's allowing yourself giving yourself the permission to put a pin in all your adult stuff responsibility i'm not suggesting it goes away yes we're all adults <laughs> yes but like put a pin in it just for a moment what would you do? Would you go touch some grass? Would you go hug a tree? Would you, would you um, go to the playground and just like swing for a minute? What would you do? And what could that look like for you to feel that magic once again? It's still in you. You didn't lose it. I love, I love that phrase too. I mean, you had unlocking the magic that's already inside you. I love that because it is, it's all, it's all inside of us. We all grew up with it. We were all dreamers and explorers. Amy, my last question for you is what advice or tips, something would you give someone who is feeling stuck or unfulfilled in their career, or personal life? Uh, it is, but is hesitant to embark on this next stage of self-discovery and transformation. I would say two things. One, where in your physical body do you feel the calling to feel more fulfilled? Okay. And the reason I say that is because we have energy centers in our body and they all correlate to an aspect in the 3D, like in the human world, <laughs> uh, we start to go there. And if you, my, my suggestion is once you figure out where that is in your physical body that you feel that, seek out a coach, me, I would love to talk to you about this. Let's talk about what that means and what that could mean. And, and by the way, reassuring you, you don't have to do anything about it right now. It's just giving like a crack in the door, being like, I feel it here's where it's coming from. And I can, I can tell you why it may be coming from there. And then on your timeline, you start to pull up that thread as you feel comfortable. The other thing I will say about that, if you ignore that call, that will start to get really, really loud. 
<laughs> really, really loud to the tune of it will be so loud in an energetic form in your body to where nothing in your day-to-day -day, day -day feels good or feels familiar. And then it's scary as hell because you're like, where am I? Who am I? What's going on? What's happening? And it can be extremely scary. That's not, it's not, that's not a fear tactic. It's just what I've seen happen. And then it's like emergent. It's like, oh, I got to do something about this now. Like, where is this coming from? It can just start to feel really uncomfortable. So the sooner you can give it a moment to breathe a little bit and you don't have to go full force, but just giving a moment to consider who's calling you, what it is, where it's coming from. If you can, by one cell of your body, give it a moment. It just wants to be seen and heard. Then you get to decide on your timeline how you want to fold that into your daily life when that's when that's appropriate for you. Amy, I can't thank you enough for taking the time and sitting down with me and sharing your world and what uh, your journey has been and what it is today. So I thank you so much for taking the time and letting me dig in. And uh, I can't thank you enough. My pleasure. And if you guys have not listened to Women Making Moves podcast, have not checked out Unlock the Magic yet, everything's going to be linked down below. Amy, thank you again so much. Uh, and I just appreciate you. Thanks, Danielle. I appreciate you. Yeah. And as always, I will see you guys back here next time. Bye, y'all.